This biomechanical forest started life as electrical conduit, or if you can't get that, I suppose you can show Henry the contempt he deserves. While the plan for the branches and uh, foliage was to make use of these cheap battery operated Christmas lights, tis the season. I started off the build by cutting some bases from 2mm MDF, but honestly anything that resists the warp will do. Oh, and quick tip, if you're thinking of using cardboard for bases, or well, anything really, then make sure you paint both sides so it's much less susceptible to the perils of uh, the overextended pump. Anyway, my bases had a hole cut to allow access to the battery box and the switch for hopefully obvious reasons. And a hole was made to fit a cut down 32mm conduit connector to provide a nice strong attachment to the base. Since this would all be hidden in the terrain, I used some scraps to secure the battery box in place and made a nice little alcove for the switch to protect it from the messy scenic steps I'd be applying later. The LEDs in these Christmas lights are wired in parallel, and that means you can chop them up as much as you like and still maintain a circuit, as long as each section has a connection to the positive and ground wires from the battery box. The tree I'm building here has five main branches, and each branch has four or five strings of lights. So this is what the wiring looks like. In essence, connect all the positives together and connect together all of the negatives. The insulation on the Christmas light wires melts away when you solder it, so you can get away with twisting the ends together and applying heat from the iron and a little bit of solder. Though you do need to be very careful not to apply the iron for too long, as the thin wires conduct heat very well and you'll melt off more insulation than you intend. I attached a length of hookup wire to each of the positive and negative sides of the branches and covered up the joint with some heat shrink to insulate it and provide more mechanical strength. Each of the LED assemblies was fed through a length of 10mm conduit that would form the main limbs of the tree. I also inserted some 3mm aluminium wire which would allow the limbs to be posed somewhat and still hold their shape. After testing it all still worked, I secured all of those elements together at the end with some hot glue. Before fixing all of the elements of the tree together, I needed to drill a hole in the conduit connector at the bottom to pass the wires through. This will all be covered up by scenery later, so just stick it wherever it's convenient. Solid life advice, probably. The five branch assemblies were then mercilessly stuffed into the top of the trunk, taking care to pass the hookup wire through to the bottom before securing all of them in place with more hot glue. This will all be covered up with epoxy putty later, but it's best to try and be as neat as possible, as hot glue does have the most independent spirit of all the adhesives. And this is where I messed up. After connecting together the hookup cables and the battery pack, I realised I'd forgotten to pass the cables through that nice hole I'd made previously, so I had to do it all again, off camera, because you know, I, was, I was feeling pretty grumpy. I can't explain why, but I decided to use expanding foam to form the basing terrain. Squat it on, let it do its thing, and then carve it up with a steak knife I liberated from the kitchen. Yeah, sorry, honey. Once I was happy with the basic landform, I cut down some more of the 10mm conduit along the center line to form roots. Then I used a glue gun to slightly melt it into the surface. Oh, and, you know, glue it. This is a process I repeated with some orchid bark pieces to represent rocks. And like most basing materials, you can get these from pet shops. After it had fully cured, the expanding foam proved to be a little bit softer than I'd like, and the large surface craters looked, you know, like craters. So I thinned down some domestic filler with water and a little bit of PVA and slapped it all over the bases, trying to blend things in a bit. This would be covered in terrain paste a little bit later, so I wasn't too concerned about everything being perfect. Let's pad out this forest with some blown up tree stumps and a fallen tree because, well, it's an easy win. The stumps are cut out of 32mm conduit with a disc of styrene glued inside to provide a surface to attach the uh, tree guts. Sorry for the technical terminology. These are simply a variety of styrene tubes haphazardly affixed into the centre of the trunk to try and form something that looks like the nervous system of the science tree. The fallen tree is constructed in much the same way, starting with a foam terrain form that's been cut to produce what I believe is known as a tree bridge, because hmm, why not? I created a root structure with more 10mm conduit and some styrene tubes, trying to make it look like it had been ripped up from the ground. At the other end, more conduit was used to form the limbs of the tree, with the bioluminescent branches now long since having been harvested by the inhabitants of this world, or that's my excuse anyway. 
at this stage, the trees look like a bunch of tubes jammed into another tube, because they are. So I mixed up some epoxy putty to disguise this sinful tube union. I chose Grillipup, a mixture of green stuff and Milliput, but honestly, any air drying sculpting product will get it done. Don't overthink it, slap it on, smooth it out, carve in some grooves, have a cringe about some long forgotten memory that chose this very moment to invade your otherwise pleasant afternoon. This is the process. Once the Gorilla Put hardened, I threw some homemade terrain paste over the bases, using it to blend in any inconsistency that was still visible in the foam, and that was that. Well, except for my favourite part of the process. Apparently I've run out of black primer, so I threw on some German Red Brown by Vallejo, followed by a coat of black. I'd rather have used a rattle can to be honest, but the UK weather, it is what it is. I followed this up with a white zenithal highlight, which again would have been fine with a rattle can if I lived somewhere with an affinity for dryness. I did mummify the lights with masking tape beforehand because the effect is well, it's just much more impactful when you can actually see it. Now for the fun bit. I painted a coat of thin cyan acrylic ink over everything. This barely affects the black, but it creates a bold, vivid blue colour over all of the highlights, giving the trees an ethereal glowing quality. As an aside, I chose a cool colour to contrast the warm glow of the LEDs, and I think that's important, especially as I plan on keeping the paint job pretty basic so as not to distract from the lighting effects. The base got a coat of grey household paint that I use for all of my terrain, followed by a dry brush of light grey to bring out some of the texture. Then the orchid bark rocks were painted various mixes of greys and browns, the specifics of which no one really cares about. And I capped things off with a wash of liquid talent and a light grey dry brush. Nothing fancy here, it's terrain. The final touch was a light scattering of dead grass tufts, and some of these neon bad boys, which, well, I've been looking for an excuse to use for a while, but yeah, the jury's still out on that. All in, this lot cost me just over £30 in parts, with plenty of the conduit left over, though I should say I did have all the basing materials and the hookup wire paints already on hand. But the real cost here was the time, with the build and paint taking two full days of work. The wiring isn't really complex, but cutting, stripping, soldering and heat shrinking all of those hookup wires, it, it does add up. And if I were to replicate this build in the future, I'd definitely use normal expanded polystyrene or XPS foam for the bases. The squirty chap requires a lot of additional steps to make it look the way I wanted, and, well, time is precious. Anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you for watching. Next time out, I'm going to do something with wheels. <laughs>